So today we're going to do the lab on limiting reactants. This is the one with the copper 2 chloride and the aluminum. When we are done, you should be able to go to the back side and complete the questions for day one and day two. In the rest of the slideshow, you should see my data that I collected. So I have my copper 2 chloride in my beaker. I'm going to add the water to get this to dissolve. because I want all of the copper 2 chloride to be in the solution so that it will react. The next step is, you'll see I've masked my aluminum foil. I need to rip this into pieces, and I'm going to put those pieces into the copper 2 chloride solution. I want to make sure I include all of these pieces because I masked all of that sheet of aluminum. And as this happens, I'm going to start to stir that and add in the rest of this. So as this reacts, I can see there is a precipitate forming in there. And I can also feel that the beaker is getting warm to touch. There's some heat being generated. So as this reaction takes place, we can see there is a substance being formed, and there is a little gas coming off. And that gas coming off is due to the heat of the reaction, because now my beaker is getting warmer. And what it's doing is it's heating the water and evaporating the water a little bit. Now, the water isn't part of the reaction here, so we're not going to include that in our equation. We're just looking at the aluminum and the copper two chloride, what's happening with those. So if we take a little closer look at that beaker, we can see that it is still reacting. And we can see there is like a brown precipitate that is forming in there. And we can also tell that that solution which was nice and blue before, is not blue anymore. It's, it's a faint blue at this point. Okay, So we're going to let that sit and react and check this in just a little bit of time. So for the final part of this lap, it looks like the reaction has gone to completion. We need to filter this and it's going to take a little time of filtering. Once we filter this, we're going to wash it with a little bit more water here just to make sure that it's clean. And we're going to continue to filter. And you can see in the uh, beaker, there's my precipitate. Okay, so there's the precipitate that we're going to collect. So we'll collect that on the filter paper, put the filter paper in the oven to dry it out so that there is no water in there because we're not including water in the reaction. So we just need to keep filtering this. Bring all that precipitate out. There we go. Looks like we're getting our beaker pretty clean. Okay, it looks like we got all of our residue in there of our precipitate. One last step is we're going to add a little hydrochloric acid to just kind of clean that up in case there's any impurities in there as that filtering finishes. And then we'll take that filter paper out and dry it in the oven. And then we will, I'll do a picture of it dried with the mass. So I'm going to add my hydrochloric acid on here just to kind of make sure we don't have any impurities in there. Let that finish filtering, and we are completely done except for the last massing 
and getting that to dry in the oven. Here's our precipitate. We are going to open this up. There it is in the filter paper. Now, the filtrate, which is left right here, whatever is soluble is the substance that's left in there. We are not interested in that. We're interested in collecting this because it's a mass that we can use for calculations. So I will get that dry and then you can get the mass that was produced.